G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we get a little bit closer to this season's Big Bash League kicking off on December 7th. And I'm doing that little thing where I'm running through each of the individual BBL teams and giving a little bit of a preview as to how that team's going to go this season, how they're shaping up from a squad point of view. And uh, yeah, just a bit of a season preview if you like. I've previously done uh, the Melbourne Renegades and you'll have noticed I've done a few squad videos about the BBL in general. And I intend to continue doing BBL content this summer, uh, including some live streams as well, which will be good. It lines up well with the UK in terms of time zone. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Perth Scorchers, the uh, reigning title winners from last year's uh, tournament. So obviously the Scorchers had the ideal result in last year's rendition of the BBL with a dramatic final win, largely thanks to young Cooper Connolly, who saved the day late with a wonderful cameo innings. In general, although the Scorchers did have a really good all-round tournament, the batting was strong. Aaron Hardy finished with the most runs of anyone in the tournament with 461 runs at an average of 41.81. And he was ably supported by guys like Cam Bancroft, Aaron Hardy, and Ash Turner as well. They all averaged over 40 runs, which is pretty damn good in the 2020 format. Josh Inglis also averages 35. In terms of their bowling, their best performer last year was actually Jai Richardson. Despite the fact that he only played just seven games, he still took 15 wickets and uh, at an economy rate of less than seven as well. Um, but as well, considering the strength of the Scorchers bowling attack last year, the other two strong contributors for them were David Payne, who has now joined the Adelaide Strikers, I think, and uh, Lance Morris as well. So we're going to run through what the squad it looks like and what's different from last year. So uh, like I said, I've already done a squad update video previously on the channel, but I'll get the Perth Scorchers squad right in front of you there. So in terms of new signings, we got Zach Crawley, the UK top order batsman. I don't know why I said UK, England top order batsman, as well as Laurie Evans, who has played for the Scorchers previously, uh, but missed last year due to some sort of anti-doping thing. Uh, and Sam Whiteman also returns, uh, having been pushed out of the team previously. He's back as probably the secondary wicketkeeper in this team. What they've lost, though, is actually not insignificant. Cam Bancroft, who averaged 51 last year at a strike rate of 140, has now gone to the Sydney Thunder. I think it's a case of salary cap pressure, uh, squeezing out a few players at the Perth Scorchers, which I suppose is inevitable in a title-winning season. Bancroft kind of joins like a number of players who have played well at the Scorchers and then left. Uh, players playing at other clubs at the moment include Sean Marsh, Nathan Coulton-Nile, Hilton Cartwright, Joel Paris, Sam Whiteman obviously has previously gone and now come back. Curtis Patterson played for us for a little bit. And then of course he has now left the squad. Uh, Roccicelli and Joel Paris are other players playing in other parts of the country right now. So there's been a squeeze of talent at Perth. Faf Duplessis is also another player who previously played for us that has now not returned for BBL 13 as is uh, Steven Eskenazi who uh, batted at the top order in last year's tournament. It's also worth noting that Cam Green has made himself unavailable for this tournament. Uh, obviously we've got Mitch Marsh still in the squad but Cam Green has decided to focus on longer format cricket this summer so he won't play and Peter Hatsoglu has also moved to a different club. So like I did for the Renegades in that video, I'm going to have a quick attempt at trying to plot the Perth Scorchers best 11. Uh, but bear in mind as well, it's due to all kinds of availability factors. So I've just tried to plot the best possible 11, uh, but obviously some of these will be subject to availability around like the international series. So it'd probably go with Zach Crawley and Mitch Marsh opening the batting with Laurie Evans batting at three. Aaron Hardy's going to be there at four. Josh Inglis and Ashton Turner uh, round out the middle to sort of top order there. Ashton Agar is currently the only spin bowl frontliner in this team so he might get a gig at seven he's probably also capable of hitting well enough to bat in that top seven potentially uh, when you consider as well the wicket keeper there in Inglis is a very strong batsman uh, Jai Richardson Matthew Kelly Berendorf and Ty probably make the squeeze although uh, subject to availability we might see more of Lance Morris as well uh, if uh, other players get called up English as well, of course, if he's playing for Australia, um, we might see Sam Whiteman moved into that role. And then Mitch Marsh, uh, again, I'd, I'd probably if he's picked for the Pakistan Test Series, we're not going to see a lot of him uh, in this tournament for Perth. So the key strengths of this team, I'd say is probably the fast bowling attack for a start. Jai Richardson headlights that team. Um, and you've also got Jason Berendorf, who's in really good form at the moment, playing in India in that T20 series. Uh, he's bowling really, really well. And like I said, Richardson took 15 wickets from seven games last year. They're also back in the top order. That's a pretty strong top order. Uh, if any I think there's probably too many top order batsmen. Um, Ashton Turner is versatile. He's probably capable of uh, pacing in his innings and being a finisher as well. Uh, but other than that, it's kind of jam-packed with 
batsman you'd ideally like to see in the top four. Uh, but it does have a combination of big hitters and players who can pace an innings as well. We've seen Ashton Turner become a very good uh, finisher as well in T20 cricket. Again, probably one weakness is the lack of a genuine frontline spinning option. As I said, Agar didn't have a great BBL 12 and remains the only spinner um, other than, you know, part-time is like Ashton Turner, for instance. So that's the general profile on the team. Players to keep an eye on, probably Jai Richardson, unless he gets called up for a test berth, which I suppose is possible. Um, then there's Lance Morris. I think we will see, I did put him outside the best 11. I think we'll see him feature in this tournament because he was pretty good in last year's tournament. And Aaron Hardy as well had a bit of a breakout season last year and Mike Hussey has tipped him to be the player of the tournament and I, I will shout out Cooper Connolly as well I mean we don't know too much about him other than that great performance in the final last year where he won the game uh, with that late cameo innings and uh, he's a bit part-time bowling option as well from what I can tell so we might see these players feature more I think Perth's depth will be uh, tested once again but Perth have been able to step up to the plate when their depth has been tested previously it's kind of a hallmark of uh, what has become probably the best historical BBL team. So in terms of a final prediction, you know, this team, it's hard to see them not making the top four and playing finals or playoffs or whatever they're called in BBL. I should learn that. Would I go as far as top two? I'm not too sure. But again, we are notorious for probably underrating the Scorchers any given season and they come out and play so well. So it seems quite possible to me that they play in the final at the very least. Uh, but top four, I think, is a safe bet. Anyway, guys, that was a lightning quick profile on the Perth Scorchers ahead of the BBL 13 season. If you want me to keep doing these previews, let me know in the comments. And as I said, I'm going to be doing more regular content. So subscribe to the channel if you're looking for BBL content. There's still going to be football content around the place, but naturally, it is the off season. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.